Um, but but there are some really interesting things for entrepreneurs you should appreciate because it's it's happened so slowly you, you don't realize it. Um, when I came out here, this was an information sparse area for an entrepreneur. You had a coffee with someone who actually knew something once a week or once a month. That was a lot of data, right? And so you know you kind of sucked up every piece of data you could find on how to build and start companies because it was rare. I mean, there was no web, there no net, no anything. Uh, nowadays, entrepreneurs have a I think a much worse problem, if you can believe it. It's too much information because if you want an opinion about any possible direction you could take, uh, it's on the web, or somebody's written a book on it, or you read your favorite blog, and all that information is, unless you have a profound belief or some guidance for yourself, that could jerk you around in 15 different directions and just melt you down. And, and, and so one of the things I teach my students is, eventually you need to develop your own moral compass. And not just moral compass, your own entrepreneurship compass. It's great to buy my book or Eric Reese's or Osterwalder's. Or, you know, there's now at least a body of knowledge that you can start with. But i got to tell you, that's not where you want to end up. Nothing makes me happier than someone saying, you know, I read your book, but let me tell you how we're really going to do it. Great. Because now at least you have your own compass. I'm happy that you start with mine. Um, so that's kind of the one other, one major difference. The other is Silicon Valley has... Um, weathered almost every major crisis. Everybody said, well, we're out of innovation, we're going to shut down. You know, yeah. the, there was the defense wave, and then there was semiconductor wave, and then there was the, you know, PC wave, and then the Web 1.0 wave, and every time people go, well, you know, the, there's no more need for X. People forget is what we really do from San Francisco to San Jose now is we no longer make products here. What we do, that's not what we really do now. We're the center of innovation and entrepreneurship for not only the United States, but for the world. And that's a big idea. What we do here is we encourage risk and we accept failure. And, and I have to tell you, when I have foreign visitors come into Stanford and go, you know, how would you explain Silicon Valley? I get it down to a sentence. I go, you know what we call a failed entrepreneur in Silicon Valley? I said, there's a special word for it. And they all kind of guess. And blah, blah, blah. I said, well, the special word for a failed entrepreneur here, it's experienced. And they look at you, and you, it's like they can't compute. I go, no, no, no. A failed entrepreneur doesn't have to change their name. They haven't shamed their family or their community or anywhere else. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, you, you, I used to, like, first step one, blame it on someone else, you know. Um, <laughs> but, but if you actually have an, what I call an honest failure, you go, let me tell you the 50 ways I screwed this up. This is my fault, blah, blah, blah. The next time you have coffee with a friend in the valley, they don't ask you, is, you know, like, did you have to pay the money back? They ask you, so what's your next startup? Mm -hmm. Nowhere else in the world, nowhere else in the world is that said. We take for granted that we're living in an innovation environment and an entrepreneurship culture where failure and the cycles of failure and success are celebrated. And the other part about our culture is no one looks at somebody who just made 20 million bucks and said, you know, goddamn capitalists. You know, we hate them. <laughs> Someone goes, well, yeah, I'm smarter than them. It's just my time hasn't come. Right? <laughs> and in fact, in a room like this, I kind of remind people that, you know, like in this room, there's at least a couple of you who are going to be worth 100 million bucks in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. all right. And, and I also remind you, it's you should look around. It's a for me. You should look around. Is that most of you would have been better off working at Walmart. Um, and, and, and that's not the funny part. Um, because the funny part is the true entrepreneurs in the room were feeling sorry for the poor son of a bitches in the rest of the room. Uh, so if you were the ones who were thinking, why well, that's going to be me, then you know you got the right DNA. So this culture is kind of unique. And that said, what really has happened in the last maybe five or ten years is the democratization of entrepreneurship. It used to be that a startup required millions of dollars. And the, the only place to get it was Sand Hill Road, or when I started in Boston, uh, if you were, uh, which was, believe it or not, competing with Silicon Valley for who was the entrepreneurship center. Uh, we used waterfall engineering, so the, the time to market was measured in years. Um, you know, you needed to buy expensive computers and expensive software. Um, computing wasn't a utility. Thank you, Amazon. You know, uh, we take for granted all this stuff. But now, in fact, especially for web and mobile and cloud apps, you can get a minimum viable product out in weeks, if not months. Um, you know, it takes hundreds of thousands of dollars to get first customers, not millions. Um, and 
you know, or less, right? Or right? free. Or free. Or living in your car. I mean, now, I wanted to know if he was really creative, he would be siphoning gas. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, you know, okay, you, you know, that's the car thing, but tell me, like, you haven't bought gas in another you know, month. Um, uh, but if you really think about it now, that's really allowed entrepreneurship to sprout in areas that we never thought possible. I mean, a one Dave McClure, a one 500 hats, could start an entrepreneurial cluster by just funding. You know, 200 startups where, you know, that might have, that amount of cash might have just, you know, funded lunch money for, you know, a, a traditional hardware company. Um, so while the valley is getting, you know, more and more denser and it's kind of the place to be, there are entrepreneurship clusters occurring in different places in the country and different places in the world. I've been to Chile, I've been to Finland, I've been to Moscow um, and uh, in Europe and seen these. And it's really kind of amazing. And the web has, and these kinds of conversations are now available instantly anywhere. So it's not like we're hoarding, you know, extreme knowledge. And so I forgot your question, but I think no, I got this great. That's great. <laughs> getting too old. I, 